challenge is the challenge of building together a common vision. Of course, we speak different languages, we work in different cultural contexts, uh, we, we use different vocabulary often to talk about the same thing. So we have to figure out a way to bring together this common vision that makes sense and that resonates for all of us. And it is particularly important to do this because, as we all know, the capitalist system and the neoliberal system has an incredible capacity to co-opt, as I think Peter mentioned, and, and to take this stuff and say, okay, how can we, which, and that's the goal of this, is to change the model of development. There are people out there spending a lot of time and money trying to figure out how we could, they can take all this and make sure that it becomes non-threatening. So we're seeing, for example, uh, new terminologies. Uh, you know, we worked for many years on what we call social finance, bringing a whole other logic to how we can use capital to support democratic enterprises and, and the solidarity economy. And all of a sudden, the big banks are talking about impact investment and new, uh, new asset classes to be able to make money and supposedly do good, good, but basically to make more money. We hear the term social enterprise, which again evacuates the issue of, 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 of democratically owned um, enterprises, of uh, citizen-based movements, and basically brings in this idea of a charitable. We have charitable entrepreneurs that want to do good. Well, that's just as good as citizen-controlled, collectively owned enterprises. We saw that at Rio when we stopped talking about, we others stopped talking about sustainable development because now we were talking about the green economy. And when we talk about the green economy, once again, we're talking about what are the good opportunities for investment to make more money uh, out of the environment. So all these things are, 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 are coming because of our success. And again, a lot of people who are attracted to these things are people who are well-intentioned. But they are being fed a, a certain idea that this can all be done without tra uh, model, the transformation of our economic model. So our responsibility is to be able to develop a global vision that is clear, that is inclusive, but at the same time gets to the bottom of the, and to the heart of what we're talking about, which is changing the way the economy is structured, that brings in another economic logic that is transformative and de democratic. A second challenge that we talked about, and Pierre Canard mentioned it, is the issue of building strong alliances with other movements that are focused on issues that are of great concern to us, but are coming at it from another logic or another perspective, be it the environmental movement, the women's movement, food sovereignty, cultural democracy, you know, they all have, we can make a long list. And again, we have to learn from history because sometimes, you know, we work a lot in Quebec with the labor union and the labor movement, and we remind people that at the beginning of capitalism, capitalism the, re the, the resistance to capitalism was organized in two structures. One was the creation of labor, of, of, of labor unions to be able to protect workers that, from capitalist exploitation in the workplace. And then there was a the cooperative movement that was a way of controlling the workplace to be able to have more democratic and, 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 and better conditions for workers. But over the years, they went on their separate path and we find sometimes in some countries where cooperative movement and this union movement are clashing. So we have to learn from history and figure out ways to get out of the silos of social movements because we all have common values and we all know that the development model that is in place is not working for any of us. And so how can we come together and work uh, together to change this model? And I think that is where the social and solidarity movement has a particular responsibility because we're not a defensive movement. We're there proposing, we're building. Others are resisting, they want to build with us, well let us work together and let us build those alliances so that we can uh, move forward together. A third challenge, and I think it's a very concrete challenge, is that we are out there trying to respond to the needs of our population on a daily basis. And so we have to begin right now, not to wait, to scale up the impact, and the economic impact of what we are doing, to, not, not be satisfied to stay on the margins of the economy, but to get into the heart of the major economic issues, uh, uh, sectors that change our lives. Mike, Mike Lewis talked about food, he talked about housing, he talked about 
the third one, Mike, help me. Pardon? Energy. Um, to do that, we have to figure out new ways to get access to capital, but access to capital that change, that has another kind of logic um, to, the, 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 to the capitalist logic. We need public policy that, that allows governments to use things like procurement and other, other all the resources that, that are being used to support traditional private sector economies to, to increase uh, commercial exports and so on to be able to focus more of those economic policies on responding to the needs of our local communities, our patterns of consumption. So these are all the tools that, we, that we're beginning to experiment, but we have to scale up uh, and really move forward in, in that. And to be able to do that, civil society has to be closely involved in the co-production of these public policies, because those who are out there doing the work know what they need to move forward. And I would add just a message to Peter in the, with the UN task force, is I think that that's another place where there's going to have to be an ongoing dialogue, a permanent dialogue, to build the UN's intervention on, on social solidarity economy in close collaboration and on an ongoing basis with civil society. The fourth challenge is a challenge of communications. We live in a world of communications where uh, things can go viral very quickly, where there's at the same time a concentration of the media, of the press, and there's so many things get going on that are fantastic good news stories, but the message is not getting out enough. And so we've got to, to figure out ways to communicate better amongst ourselves, to learn from each other, uh, and also to speak to the general public so that people know that this is going on, they hear the good news, uh, and, that, and so I think the issue of communications, and once again, this is an issue that we will be talking about over the next few days. The fifth uh, and final challenge is the challenge in effect, as Peter talked about, there are spaces opening up to be able to influence international debates and get into those spaces. And this is perhaps one of the most complicated ones. And it's a debate that we are struggling with at FIPES because this movement has to be grounded in community. It has to be grounded in territory. It has to be grounded in nations and in continents. And at the same time, the challenges of filling those spaces quickly means that we also have to have, in, in, we have to invest time and energy in building the networks and articulating a common vision that allows us to take up those spaces and speak on behalf of what is going on. And this is a complex, challenge. It cannot be linear. We can't just wait for things to boil up from the bottom to the top because we're going to lose the momentum. And yet, we cannot have a top-down structure that tells people on the ground what is good for them. It has to be a dialectic process. I would submit that it has to be a process of a, what I would call a, a principle of subsidiarity. What can be done at a local level must be done at a local level. What can be done at a national level must be done at a national level. But there's some things we're going to have to do together, and these are the kinds of things that FIPES, as an intercontinental network, and partners of FIPES, we have to work together, find the resources, and find the time to make sure that we are taking up the space and seizing these opportunities so that in return, we can open up the spaces and get the tools and the opportunities to reinforce what is being done in communities, in villages, in neighborhoods across the world. So I will finish my remarks to say that, yes, in 30 years, when, since I started, and many others, we have certainly made a lot of progress. We've made mistakes. We've made steps forward, steps backwards. But we have progressed slow and steady. The problem is, time is running out. And so we're going to have to accelerate the space, the, the, the pace at which this work is being done. And that's why I'm so pleased to see that there's so many young people here today and that this is happening in a university setting. Um, I'm pleased and I must salute the fact that I am here, I'm the grandma, but we have a youth delegation from Quebec. Young people who are involved daily in social and solidarity economy who are here who want to know more about what is going on and contribute to building this global movement. And I know that there are a lot of young people out there from the Philippines and elsewhere, and at home from the, in, in other continents. So I think that um, we also have to
pass the baton in this marathon of transformation to our young people, give them the space that they need. I hope that we will begin in, t in this magnificent forum here in the Philippines um, to learn from our experience, but also to make sure that the next generation can pick up where we've taken it to and to move on quickly, because I think the future of the world, the future of our planet, depends on you. So good strength and courage, and I hope we'll have a great conference. Thank you.